We had three parts of graphics accelerators, two bags of grass, two versions of the PCIe bus, a powerful six core processor, a couple of super samples of deep learning or DLSS and FSR, also a pile of video games of different genres and release dates. Not that we needed all that for the tests, but once you get locked into eight gigabytes, the tendency is to push it as far as you can. Popular gaming graphics cards all have number 6 in their index. At least in GPUs, product naming hasn't gone haywire yet. The new cards are the RTX 4060, 4060 Ti, and AMD RX 7600, and all of the aforementioned cards have 8GB of video memory. The 4060 Ti has a 16GB version, but its price puts it in a whole different category. Today we will find out if 8GB is enough for Full HD and 2K, compare what the newest DLSS and FSR with frame generation can give, and check what happens if you use such a card with an old motherboard. And finally, we'll find out why using upscaling on such mid-tier cards sometimes can even decrease the frame rate. This is MK. Let's reveal all the secrets of mid-tier cards. Let's go. The new NVIDIA cards have been criticized by everyone, including us. If the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti had a full-fledged PCIe 4.0 bus with 16 lanes, then the RTX 40 series had it cut to 8 lanes. On top of that, the number of compute units in new GPUs is less than that in old ones, which is nonsense. But NVIDIA justifies it by frequency growth, architecture improvements, and frame generation. The cherry on the cake, Team Green took away 12 gigabytes. Now we have only 8 gigabytes in the RTX 4060. One of the advantages of the new GPUs is the transition to the 5 nanometer TSMC node, which allows to make such small ones. The price reduction is not that big. Formally, the RTX 4060 has become $30 cheaper. But on average, at the moment, the 3060 and 4060 cost around the same, $300 to $350. And for the TI version, you will have to add up to $100 on top. Knowing all this, the RX 7600 looks pretty good actually. Relative to the old RX 6600, both the frequency and compute units have increased. The architecture has been upgraded and the memory has become faster. The bus was 8 lanes PCIe 4.0 and it stayed that way. It is easy to find for about $300. The only thing to complain about is its power consumption which has increased by a couple of dozen watts. But it's a desktop card so why would you care? As a result, in addition to our regular tests, we will do something else. Many people have old top-end systems with processors that are still good enough to this day. There are also old motherboards. But is PCIe 3.0 enough for these new cards? Secondly, both AMD and Nvidia decided that 8GB of video memory will suffice. And we are here to check how true that is. So we'll load up the memory to the fullest. Ultra textures, ray tracing, we'll check them in 2K. And find out if the manufacturers lied to us. We launched the games in two modes, ultra graphic settings with ray tracing and upscaling off in order to understand the pure performance, and with the maximum preset including ray tracing and frame generation to understand the potential of these video cards. The resolutions were selected depending on the frame rate. If 1080p was too easy for the cards and the frame rate went above 60, we would then use 1440p. Games that had a huge load on video memory were also tested via PCIe 3.0 to check how much performance is lost when the video card has to move a lot of data over a narrow bus. And since we are testing GPUs, we have created ideal conditions for them. The processor is the popular 6-core Ryzen 5 7500F, which is more than enough for such video cards. 32GB DDR5 at 7200, all games and the system are installed on an NVMe SSD. The benchmarks are not so important for us, but still, here are the results for all our test subjects in 3 Mark x Pi. Everything is within the expected range. The RTX 4060 is the slowest. The RX 7600 is slightly faster, but the 4060 Ti is 20% ahead of both of them. But benchmarks are one thing, and real gameplay is quite another story. Let's begin with the blue Far Cry on Pandora. I wonder why all Ubisoft's games turn out to be the same as Assassin's Creed or Far Cry. The Avatar came out very beautiful and with very good optimization at the start. 
and ultra graphic settings, Full HD, the RTX 4060 and RX 7600 are going neck to neck. The difference is about a couple of FPS. At the same time, the red card consumes one and a half times more power. For once, Nvidia has an energy efficient architecture. The RTX 4060 Ti is 20% faster and this is your entry level card if you want ultra settings, native resolution at 60 FPS. Video memory utilization is also striking. All the subjects have more than 7 GB utilized, that is, there is no reserve for the future at all. But these video cards have just come out. Now let's add some magic. All three cards support FSR 3 with frame generation. This option is available even on the RTX 20 series, thanks to AMD supporting older NVIDIA cards better than NVIDIA proper. With fake frames and high quality FSR, the frame rate on all three cards broke through 100 and at the same time, the picture quality only slightly decreased. Looking at such results, call this technology marketing BS, I cannot. This technology actually allows you to have a taste of those fast 144Hz monitors with a mid-tier card in new demand in games, especially with the RTX 4060 Ti, which is again 20% faster than the other two. Next in line is the updated Cyberpunk, which will definitely not receive updates anymore. In Full HD at Ultra without any upscaling, the whole trio has no problems. You can count on 60 stable FPS. At the same time, the game suddenly fell in love with Radiance. The RX 7600 is only a tad slower than the 4060 Ti and the 4060 is 10% behind. In terms of video memory utilization, everything is bad again. 7 occupied gigabytes will always haunt you. What if we enable ray tracing? Of course, we're not going for path tracing, even the 1490 is not quite capable of handling it properly. We turned on ray tracing at ultra, upscaling enabled, and that's where Team Green is leading once again. The game has DLSS 3.5 with ray reconstruction and frame generation, but all this works only on the NVIDIA RTX 40 series. AMD has a trump card up its sleeve, the ability to enable frame generation called fluid motion in beta driver. This technology is of course nothing more than a workaround. Fluid motion turns off when the camera rotates rapidly, it cannot recognize motion vectors since it's not built into the game engine directly, so enabling frame generation via FSR 3 in the game settings turns out to give a much more stable result. I would call fluid motion a last chance technology for when you got a slow GPU and you need to achieve a playable result by any means. However, in Cyberpunk, we were unable to turn it on. The driver would crash, followed by the game. It's too early to put all the blame on AMD for this though. This feature is still in beta after all. There is not much point in using fluid motion with the RX 7600 in this case. Even with FSR 2, you can get about 40 FPS in the Cyberpunk benchmark with ultra ray tracing. Yes, the RTX 4060 with frame generation and ray reconstruction would be twice as fast, but this card is also more expensive. An extra fee for more advanced tech. Atomic Heart is perfectly optimized, besides, it doesn't have ray tracing on both the Radian and the 4060, so it's easy to get 60 to 80 FPS at Ultra in Full HD. In this case, the red card is slightly better. The RTX 4060 Ti managed to reach 100 FPS, turning out to be 20% faster again. Video memory is enough for all three video cards. Only 5GB is utilized. If desired, you can even try 2K and turn on frame generation, the latter being quite useless in this game to be honest. The RX 7600 is an outsider, for there is only DLSS 3 in Atomic Horde. But here the fans of Team Red will not lose much. Even a mid-tier Radeon GPU with FSR 2 at quality is able to output over 60 FPS in 1440p at Ultra. The RTX 4060 is only 10-20% to faster due to frame generation. Meanwhile, the developers honestly warn the player about the disadvantages of this technology. And yes, artifacts from fake frames are sometimes quite noticeable. Moving on to the game that offended the owners of the GTX 1000 series and RX 5000. We are talking about Alan Wake 2, which is so advanced that it only works normally on cards made in 2020 and later. Without any upscaling and ray tracing, you can count on a playable 50-60 to 60 FPS on all three cards. At the same time, the RX 7600 is positioned in terms of native performance exactly between the 4060 and its TI version, ahead of the former and 10% behind the latter. Video memory is almost fully utilized again. 
The RX 7600 again consumes one and a half times more power than the RTX 4060. Talking about stability. If you want to smooth a picture, you can enable upscaling. The Team Red card is again an outsider. Only FSR 2 is available for it. But Nvidia fans rejoice. There is both frame generation and ray reconstruction available. As a result, at Ultra, without ray tracing, you can achieve 80 to 90 FPS with the RTX 4060 and more than 100 with the 4060 Ti. Compared to these results, the RX 7600 with its 60 FPS doesn't look good, but I still can hardly call this result unplayable. Let's enable maximum ray tracing. Realizing that the RX 7600 will not handle this, we activated fluid motion, but even this did not save the card from a catastrophic failure. Alas, radians are still bad at advanced ray tracing, even upscaling can't help it. I mean, this performance is considered playable by console standards, about 25 to 30 FPS, but frankly, the picture is lousy, there is clearly not enough data for frame generation, besides the input lag is quite annoying. As for Nvidia, everything is good here. The frame rate is of course less than what it was, but even the RTX 4060, thanks to frame generation, produces more than 60 FPS on average, and the 4060 Ti up to 80. Let's move on to racing games, of course to the sunny Mexican Forza Horizon 5. The game pleases with excellent optimization and picture, so it is not surprising that in 2K at Ultra, without upscaling, all three cards are capable of rendering about 60 FPS. The RX 7600 is again equal to the RTX 4060. The 4060 Ti is 20% ahead, but the video memory is fully utilized, all 8GB. And it is for this reason that enabling upscaling causes a notification about a lack of VRAM to appear and a decrease in performance. Quite a surprise we got here. Attempting to improve mid-tier cars by magic upscaling works only if there's enough video memory, and both Nvidia and AMD have got a corner on it. As a result, some of the data is sent to the RAM, and here again trouble. The PCIe bus is also undercut. So we recommend playing Forza in a native resolution, since there's still enough performance for it. But what will happen in the future when this card is not good enough for the native resolution anymore and it's lacking video memory even now? We will answer this in the conclusion. Let's go on. Next up is Forspoken. The first game with FSR 3 and frame generation by AMD implemented into the game engine. It would seem that Radiance should have no problems in a game with AMD advertising. But the reality is different. Here, the RTX 4060 in native Full HD with Ultra Graphics turns out to be twice as good as the RX 7600. And all of this is because the maximum preset for the graphics by default includes ray tracing, which the red cards are not really friends with. Only FSR 3 saves the RX. At quality with frame generation on, the frame rate increased to 50 and sometimes even to 100. Only the red technology also boosts the RTX 4060 quite well. It still turns out to be one and a half times faster than the RX, and its TI version is even twice as fast. It was very rash to include ray tracing into the default settings of a game made in cooperation with AMD. Let's dive into a sad medieval fairy tale. And it's not only sad because of the story of a Plague Tale Requiem. In Full HD at Ultra in the market location, except for the utilization of 7GB of video memory, there are no problems. All three cards are capable of rendering over 60 FPS, and the 7600 is almost catching up with the RTX 4060 Ti. And it's sad, because if you turn on ray tracing, the RX is done. The frame rate drops below the level that we call cinematic, plus you start getting some artifacts. And the game is not new, so it won't work to blame these problems on the fact that AMD simply did not have time to optimize the driver. Enabling fluid motion doesn't help. The frame rate remains at the same level. Some blur is added, the picture is less smooth, and you start getting even more artifacts. In general, you can only play A Plague Tale on the RX 7600 without ray tracing. All the tests above are relevant for current PCIe 4.0 motherboards. Let me remind you that each version of PCIe Express is twice as fast as the previous one, that is 8 PCIe 4.0 lanes are comparable to 16 3.0 lanes. In absolute terms, this is only 16 gigabytes per second, three times slower than DDR4 at 3200, not even speaking about the video memory of the cards tested. That is, access to data from RAM on our GPUs turns out to be extremely undercut. Therefore, it's interesting to check. 
how the reduction of the bandwidth to 8 gigabytes per second will affect it. We artificially turned our PCIe 4.0 into 3.0 in the BIOS and checked the results. Cyberpunk shows new issues. 8 gigabytes is enough and in this case, the bandwidth cut in half doesn't have a noticeable impact. But if there is not enough video memory, you can run into problems. 8 gigabytes of video memory in Forza Horizon at Ultra 2K is not enough for the normal operation of upscaling, which causes performance loss. Therefore, cutting the bandwidth hurts the frame rate. The RTX 4060 Ti loses 20%, the RX 7600 15%. A Plague Tale is a complete failure. As soon as 8GB of video memory run out, the 4060 and the TI version lose as much as half of their performance when using an older and slower PCIe. The RX is saved by the faulty ray tracing. Without it, the frame rate loss from a low bandwidth is less, about 10%, since there's still enough video memory. For comparison, if we take the RTX 4090, with which Nvidia was not greedy and gave it as much as 24GB and 16 lanes, the transition from 4.0 to 3.0 affects the performance at the margin of error, since the video memory is not a bottleneck. 8GB cards do not have any reserve for the future. In many games, video memory is utilized almost to the full even in Full HD, and this is already causing problems. Considering such GPUs for old PCIe 3.0 motherboards, I would not recommend. The loss in performance is simply catastrophic. Yes, the new RTX 40 series consume less power, but they come with 4GB less and with a lower bandwidth. It would be funny if in a couple of years, thanks to 12GB of video memory, the RTX 3060 will turn out to be consistently faster than the 4060. The Huang's attempt to go for DLSS 3 with frame generation is working here and now, but as we have seen later in the future when the video memory is not enough anymore, Upscaling will only worsen the situation. The RX 7600 is even worse. Yes, the performance has increased, but it comes with the same amount of memory and the PCIe bus is still 8 lanes. And unlike the RTX 40 series, the upscaling here leaves much to be desired. Fluid motion ruins the picture, is not always functional, and requires trial and error. And FSR 3 is still a rare occurrence. Of course, in a year or two, frame generation by AMD will appear in more games. But by that time, 8GB of video memory will be too little for any game. Therefore, this card turns out to be useless double time. It is already worse on average than such a small, had to place it on clay because it's not standing up, RDX 4060. It comes with DLSS and ray tracing, and it has the same amount of video memory. It is worth considering a 4060 only if your PC has a PCIe 4.0 support, and if you're planning to upgrade your card in a couple of years. Saving a buck and getting an RX 7600, I do not see the point at all. You will have to leave behind the full-fledged ray tracing and frame generation. And the 4060 Ti with 8GB, in my opinion, is the most useless model. Paying an additional third of the cost for 20% of performance with VRAM bottlenecking doesn't look like a good idea. If you want a good reserve for the future, go for the RTX 3060. The real performance is only slightly less than that of the RTX 4060. It got no DLSS 3 or frame generation, but it has 16 PCIe lanes and 12GB of VRAM. And if you need frame generation, later on it will be implemented by no other than AMD, considering that Nvidia can also cut some corners on the RTX 5060. Our good old 3060 still has every chance to hold out until the next generation of consoles is released. This was MK, my name is Mikhail Krashen. I'll see you again. Bye. Все, поехали.